Picking a good saddle can be really tricky, especially when, well, visually, they kind of all look fairly similar and have many similar features. Have you ever wondered what it is that makes one saddle really comfy and another just not work for you? Well, today we're gonna to help you understand some of those factors and help you to be able to identify the saddle that's gonna work for you. So, a saddle's a saddle, right? Well, wrong. Now, saddles do visually fairly look alike, and other than the fact that you're gonna get some saddles that are heavily padded, some that are minimally padded, some that are wide, and some that are narrow, there's actually a lot more to take into account uh, with the style of riding you're doing, the length of saddles, all these sorts of different factors, and of course, your anatomy. Everyone is slightly different. Now, in today's video, I'm using Salitalia saddles to try and illustrate the points uh, between gravel cross country and marathon riding, which, at a glance, you might think have the same requirements, but actually, they're fairly different. Uh, and obviously, I'm using those as a discipline to show you what I'm talking about here, but it does apply to other genres in mountain biking. Okay, so let's have a look at the actual anatomy of a saddle, just so you can figure out all of the components on one, because there's a bit more going on that you might consider. Um, so you can understand what's going on. Now let's start by looking at the rails which are on the underneath of a saddle. Now firstly, you get different materials of the rails. You'll get chromoly, you'll get titanium and carbon fiber. I'm sure there are some other options available on the market, but they're the three major offerings. Now chromoly rails are brilliant, they can absorb shock, but they generally are a little bit heavier, but also a little bit cheaper. So it does mean you can get a fully featured saddle, just be a little bit weightier uh, and it will do a job for you if you need the lighter offering, and arguably something a bit more comfortable, titanium rails is probably the material you want to be looking at. Now titanium as an alloy obviously has a mixture of different materials in there. It's known for being lightweight, but also being a very forgiving metal. So it can have sort of slightly damping properties in the fact that it will reduce the vibration that's transmitted from the bike through to you, essentially. So it makes a great material for having rails built from. And then you've got carbon fiber. If you want all out performance and lightweight, uh, then that's probably where you want to be looking. I mean, this saddle looks really futuristic if you look at the underneath of that, the way that is just molded, a uh, beautiful piece of design. Now also, you want to be considering the length of the rails. Now typically, you'll find that many saddles will be fairly similar, but if you're an especially tall or an especially short rider, you might want to consider a saddle that's got slightly longer rails on it, just to help fine tune your position. Now I'm saying this from a taller rider's perspective in the fact that many bikes I ride have the saddle up very high and I'll still end up putting the saddle fairly far forwards because otherwise my body weight will be too close to the rear wheel axle. You don't always get the freedom uh, with the angles on the bike or the freedom with the length of the rails. So having a saddle that will have longer rails definitely can afford you to get a better bike fit. So definitely something to consider if it is something you struggle with. And then finally is the way that the rails are actually mounted into the bodies themselves. So Italia have a shock absorbing system built into their saddles, or at least some of their saddles here. Now traditionally, the rails on the underneath the saddle will be a single loop and it will be either bonded or bolted in place like this one is here, and the ends will literally be loops that just stick into the saddles. But these saddles are actually fixed at all three points and fixed to a rubber bumper and then to the saddle itself. So technically you've got these titanium rails that absorb some of the vibration, then you've got the rubber bumpers that remove even more vibration, and then you've got the padding and the shape of the saddle to do its job. So arguably, that could afford you more comfort than you can get from many other saddles. And next up is the base of the saddle. So the rails fix into the base, and the base itself is what gives the saddle the comfort and support. Yes, you can have a lot of padding that will give you an element of comfort, but if the base isn't the correct profile for you, it won't be as comfortable. So this is why you get some saddles, like cross-country saddles, that have a very thin amount of padding, yet can be incredibly comfortable. It's all about the profile of the base. Now, there tends to be three major offerings available. You get flat, neutral, and wavy approaches. Now, a flat saddle would be something like this cross-country saddle, which, as you can see, has a very flat, long profile to it. The reason for that is to enable a dynamic rider to really move around on the saddle itself. Now, flat saddles tend to be best for cyclists that have got a high hip rotation. Uh, this is something we're gonna explain a bit more when we get into the ID match system that San Italia offer, uh, which is a great way, actually, uh, an operation on their website for figuring out which style saddle is gonna work with your anatomy. Then you have a more neutral shaped saddle, which is suitable for both dynamic and static cyclists. Uh, of course, dynamic being someone like a cross-country racer that's moving around lots, on the bike and static being more like a marathon rider 
who's gonna stay in a single position for a lot longer. Uh, and then finally, you've got the wavy shape, which is gonna suit this static cyclist. Uh, you could probably just about see side on here, there's a bit of a profile to the, the shape of the saddle. Sometimes this can be masked by the amount of padding on there, but you get the gist of the fact that this has a substantial dip at this part of the saddle. So these are prime for the static rider, as someone that can typically have a low hip rotation. Then there's the padding on the saddle itself. So a common mistake many people make will look at a saddle like this and go, oh, that's uncomfortable, and look at a saddle like this and say, it's comfortable. But actually, that's actually irrelevant. So a saddle with lots of padding, yes, provided it has the support and it's the correct width for you and it's the correct length for you, yes, it can be more comfortable. But it has to be the correct shape regardless of the padding. So you can have a saddle, as I've explained before, with less padding that could be more comfortable than something with a good amount of padding. Uh, but that's not to suggest it's going to be any better for a certain discipline. So just think about it in performance stakes. So provided you have a saddle that fits you, it comes down to the category of riding uh, to what really is going to suit you. Cross country racing and riding, you're going to need a saddle that has less padding because of the way that you move around on the bike and the way that you need to get your power down, a saddle with less padding is going to be more beneficial. A saddle where you're going to spend a lot of time in it in a fixed position is where you're really going to need more padding uh, to alleviate the pressure. So just consider that. It's not just about the amount of padding it has, it's about the overall shape uh, and how that padding can support your body. And next up, you want to consider the actual cover of the saddle itself, uh, which will have textures and grip and all sorts of different features depending on what it's designed for. Again, this saddle with a flat profile on top is designed to move around on a lot, but because of the narrow shape there, uh, what they've done is they have a texture on the top here to give you, basically give you a bit of traction when you're sat on a saddle perching in a place which would otherwise be quite awkward. You also want to consider things like bumpers on the shoulders of the saddle there. These are essential on mountain bikes that have a bit of rough and tumble, you fall over. When a saddle hits the floor, this is the first area that's going to tear on a saddle. You definitely want to be considering something that's built for the purpose. The nose of the saddle is a crucial part of it. Look at the difference between these two. This one is very long, very thin, very narrow. This one is very wide, very short, and very padded. Uh, a completely different offering for a completely different purpose. So, as explained before, in terms of cross country, you're gonna be moving around loads. Uh, this is not to suggest that this is a comfortable part of the saddle to sit on, it's a functional part of the saddle to aid you in a very specific part of the ride. Uh, of course, the bulk will be in the correct part of the saddle there, but you need to have those long, thin saddles in order to get in different positions. A saddle that's gonna relieve more pressure, like this one with a huge channel, a wide nose that has padding on the front, is gonna be very applicable for a different style of riding. Again, gravel style riding, where you wanna relieve the pressure and be comfortable for extended periods uh, through vibration and you know, off-road scenarios, is all things to take into consideration. Saddle width, uh, this is primarily the major thing that people understand about saddles, and arguably, it's probably the single most important thing. Uh, your sit bones, they have to be supported by the saddle, otherwise you're gonna be sat on the soft stuff, and uh, that is not comfortable. Now, some brands will offer differing sizes of saddles, but it tends to be pretty much a narrow or a wider option that is gonna suit you best. And finally, pressure relief channels. Now, you might see channels like this one, which is ventilated and literally a slot through the whole saddle, and it does speak for itself because uh, we've all felt the pressure uh, on your undercarriage at some point when you've been riding for a long extended period of time. So pressure relief channels are brilliant, but they don't always have to be all the way through like this one. This has a pressure relief channel, which you can see from the underneath, uh, but it doesn't have the ventilation associated with something like this. Now, something to take into consideration with a pressure relief saddle is when it has a full channel like this that's all the way through, it doesn't just offer pressure relief or ventilation. It also enables the saddle to move as two separate pieces. Uh, so that will be included as part of the flex and comfort that's built into the saddle itself. So it does have an additional feature as well as that pressure relief. Okay, so let's have a look at the disciplines themselves just to see what the requirements are. Uh, starting with cross country. Now, cross-country racing and riding is all about covering ground as fast and efficiently as possible. As a result, the bikes are very lightweight uh, across the board, whether it's full suspension or hardtails, and the saddles are oh, exactly that. So you can have rails that could be titanium or, like this one, could be carbon. But the point is, it's about keeping the weight down. Now, note this saddle is quite long as well, so you'll typically see longer saddles used in cross-country because you're changing position a lot. And to do that, you need a longer saddle. So 
There's a few things to take into consideration here. So the actual length enables the rider to perch on the front of the saddle, uh, which in climbing terms means you can still weight the front end of the bike, but keep the traction on the rear end whilst keeping the power down in an efficient position. There's lots going on here. Also, the transition between seated and stood up needs to be as seamless as possible because you lose power, uh, you lose energy essentially by doing that. So you will see the saddles generally are quite thin to enable that, but irrelevant of the actual width of the saddle, you'll find past the point where your sit bones sit on the actual saddle to support your body, they often tail off at the back. And this is to enable you to slide off the back of the saddle as well for descending. So the saddle has to accommodate a rider and a racer that's moving around constantly on the bike. Uh, so that is something that is quite specific to cross country. The other thing to take into consideration with cross country racing and riding is the padding. Now, you don't want a saddle that's got loads of comfortable padding on there because it's not necessarily the best thing for putting the power down. These saddles tend to have the support that you need and they will have padding, but it'll be thinner and it will be firmer. Think of it like the suspension on a sports car. It's there to basically give you the body support that you need in order to get the power down. If it were to be like a big fat padded saddle, it's gonna handle a bit more like a Cadillac. Uh, not what you want with a high performance category such as cross country racing. Okay, so marathon riding or racing. Uh, essentially, this is still cross country, but over an extended period of time. I mean, it could be a 12 hour race, uh, or it could be a stage race over a matter of days, something a bit more like the Cape Epic. Now, as a result, lightweight, yes, it will definitely be a factor, but it's not the overriding factor. It's not about all that lightweight. It has to be super comfortable over a long period of time. Now, the style of riding that you're gonna be doing in a marathon will mean you will be moving around on the bike, but much less so. You're gonna have more extended periods of time sat in the seat. So therefore, support and padding is probably the most important thing you're gonna see on a saddle like this. Uh, again, you will be moving around, but it's far less of a criteria than it will be on the racing saddles that you see on the cross-country bikes that are much leaner, much more slender. Uh, so you might notice that the length of the saddle is a bit shorter because it's just not quite as necessary to have that position for the constant change of position on the bike. And finally, gravel riding. So yes, it's just another form of riding bikes off-road, but gravel bikes themselves are subject uh, to a few more factors you might want to consider. So firstly, uh, is the vibration you're going to get through the bike. So traditionally, gravel bikes will be having thinner tyres than mountain bikes. So yes, you can get plus size options with bigger tyres, but for the most part, you will be subject to more vibration coming through the frame, through the seat post and into you, uh, whether it's through the handlebars or through the saddle. So I would recommend, or you certainly want to consider looking at something with a softer rail system. So not necessarily a chromoly rail, not necessarily a carbon rail, but something like a titanium rail on there. So titanium, as we know, is an alloy and it's quite a forgiving material. Uh, it does have an element of flex to it and an element of absorbing vibration. So that's a really good material to look at in terms of your rail on a saddle. But combine that with some suspension that's built into the saddle itself. The saddle at both ends is fixed and also has rubber bumpers underneath them, which act as a level of suspension. So you've got a further barrier there to remove a level of vibration that would otherwise be transmitted to you. Combine that with the correct shaped saddle that's a bit shorter, a bit wider at the nose, uh, we'll have a bit more padding on there. And you've got a saddle that is prime for gravel riding. And then of course is the drop bar position. So yes, you've got your drop bars, you've got your hoods, but typically you're gonna be running a bit more forwards on the front of the saddle. So. You certainly don't want a saddle that's super long and super narrow, like a cross-country race saddle, because that just could be a lot, a lot of pain, actually, over a longer ride. You want something with a wider saddle at the front that's got a bit more support and a shorter nose on there. Uh, it's just not as necessary as the cross-country race saddle. And of course, a pressure relief channel as well will work wonders on a gravel bike. Now, picking a saddle can be very tricky, especially when you go to a saddle website like Sellatali when there are so many options on there. Uh, but thankfully, they have a system called ID Match, which is essentially uh, an online calculator that helps you understand the criteria that you're looking for from a saddle, and it's actually really quite clever. So you should be able to see the calculator here, and you input everything about yourself. Got to be honest here. So you put your gender in there, you put your height in there, you put your body type, and then you have your pelvic rotation, which, to be honest, it might not necessarily be something that mountain bikers always think of when choosing saddles. Uh, but as Salitalia are showing us here, is a very vital thing. So you've got two options you can see on screen. There's retroverted or antiverse. Now, as we know, many saddle manufacturers take into account the body flexibility in order to pick a saddle. 
The logic is that a highly flexible people can bend at the spine and their pelvis will be more vertical to the saddle. So therefore, a flat saddle for those people will be a better fit. And then the next factors are the type of cyclist, uh, road or off-road. So what do the ID numbers actually mean then? So you've got L and you have S, and they simply mean narrow or wide between the two. And then you've got the numbers. So the number system, uh, number one means barely any rotation in your hips, and number three means lots of rotation, and number two means you would suit either saddles or a neutral saddle. As I said, there's a bit more to choosing a saddle than meets the eye. It's not just about the width of the saddle and choosing if you have um, not much padding or loads of padding. So do take that into consideration, especially if you struggle with saddles. Uh, now I do recommend having a look at the ID Match system on the Seller Tally website because it will help you learn a bit more about what you want to choose from your next saddle. Uh, hopefully this video has been interesting for you. Uh, please do leave us some feedback in the comments underneath and we'll see you in the next video. See you later.